Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part six of my scrap metal inspired 3D printed Geiger alien xenomorph suit. In the previous episodes, I've printed out an entire arm, which is partly rigid ABS plastic and also partly NinjaFlex rubber. Some of the prints are hybrid prints printed on a printer with dual extruders. Have a look at the first part for an explanation of how that works. I'm using a TAS 3 with dual extruders so I can print ABS and NinjaFlex in the same print which means I can bond the pieces together and print them all in one go. In the last part, I started to work on the head, the jaw and some of the other parts. And today we're going to have a look at the inner jaw mechanism and how that's going to pop in and out and how the little jaw is going to open and close. So here's what we have for the jaw so far. So this was made in three pieces and then it's been stuck together. So the idea is the jaw mechanism will hinge about these points. And we've got the upper jaw here, which fits about there. So what we need to do is make sure that that jaw will open wide enough and the inner jaw can come through. And we also need to think about some sort of sliding mechanism to take it in and out. At the point we've designed it and it fits through the main jaws, then we can start thinking about the actual jaw mechanics um, and how that mounts into the rest of the head. So let's have a look at some CAD. So here's our first lot of parts. You can see the two bucket shaped things here look suspiciously like the inner jaw. And there's also uh, two rows of teeth which I'm going to stick on afterwards. These parts are going to be printed in ABS so I can acetone weld those on. Um, in the middle there we've got a rather suspicious looking part and four knobbly parts which stick onto the chamfers on there. So that's going to make the actual piece that pushes the jaw out and you can see that the rotating parts of the jaw will fit onto those two knobbly bits on the end. There's a slot in the other end of that, which this big flat piece is going to slot into and be acetone welded to, and that's going to allow it to slide on effectively V rollers to slide in and out. There's a hole for a servo there in that flat part, so you can just see the square hole on the very left, and that's going to have a servo which pushes a rod to operate the bottom of the middle jaw. You'll notice there's rollers on the top and bottom of the middle jaw with kind of V grooves in them. I'm going to have a figure of eight drive belt between them, which will hopefully keep those in sync. So the top and bottom should open simultaneously. So here's the uh, piece which that slots into. So we've got four rollers which fit into the four holes of the corner of the piece on the left. There's a big wheel that rotates there, which is going to actually push the other flat piece in and out. So that will push the slider in and out with the inner jaw on when it rotates. I haven't decided what drives this wheel yet. Probably another servo, which will get fitted at a later stage. And the little L-shaped thing in the um, gap there on the left is um, actually to hold that wheel. And that means that I can put the wheel um, raised up above the piece that's sliding. So um, if I print all these out, hopefully we can put it together and you can see how it works. So here are all my parts. I've got my bottom and top jaw, which um, hinge on this thing. So that's the bottom, and that will hinge on there to make the jaw scoop open and close. And we've got these little teeth, which um, I will paint up separately in silver and stick onto the edge there. These knobbly things will go onto the chamfer, as I described, and then we need to put together the whole roller assembly. Now, the little rollers that I showed you in the CAD drawing turned out to be too small, because I got my radius and diameter confused, so I've printed some larger ones. And those should mount onto the holes on there in each corner to allow this thing to slide in and out. Then we can have a go at actually putting the wheel on and its little holder piece. So let's get some acetone out and start sticking that together. So here's my inner jaw assembly, um, which is hinged here. I've just got these two metal rods in here, which I'm just going to glue the ends in so they push all the way through to make up the mechanism. But I'm just going to put some hot glue in the very ends here, each end, just so that that doesn't slip out. Um, we don't really need to fix them in any better than that. So I've got these rollers in here, which I'm going to sink together in a figure of eight. So I'm going to run a piece of this fishing line in a figure of eight formation around here 
and I've got grooves on the inside so that can run all the way around the rollers. Obviously they don't need to move very far, they kind of need to do probably not even 45 degrees each, but we just need to keep those in sync so that when I push the bottom one with the servo, the top one also opens to the same amount. So I've got these screws in holes that I made in the back there to tie the cord off. So we'll wrap that round and hopefully that will keep that in sync. And that's the same way I did the mechanism of my Hulkbuster arms to open the weapons pods. So a motor only drives one half and the other one stays in sync. So I stuck my cord in there. You can maybe just about see it in between. But basically now when I operate the bottom jaw, the top one opens simultaneously and they both stay in sync. I've just put a blob of hot glue on the string at the top and on the screw. I've only put the string on one side. I could put it on both sides if I wanted. So that now operates quite well. So I've painted up my tiny teeth, which are in extremely cheap one pound chrome spray paint. So we're just gonna get some acetone on a small brush and attempt to um, mount those on the inside of the jaw at the top and the bottom. So it looks like it's taking shape quite nicely there. So I've got some acetone here which will melt ABS. I've also got my other pot which has got ABS dissolved in acetone which makes an acetone or an ABS glue or a sort of paste. Uh, these parts are fairly flat so I'm just going to use acetone. So I'm just going to wet all along there and the bottom of the teeth and stick the bottom and top jaws in. Have to be careful because the acetone will take the silver paint off as well. And you should do this in a well ventilated area. That should actually make a chemical weld and stick that on pretty permanently. So I've got my teeth stuck on there, which seems to work quite well. I've got these knobbly bits that need to be stuck to the shaft in the same way, which will be fairly easy to stick on, being flat. So if we can imagine that coming out of the jaws, it opens. Probably about there. I think that's looking pretty good and I need to paint these teeth silver as well. So I've got this assembled and I've got a little servo in here which is a normal radio control servo which will turn and I need to make a custom rod to have that push the back of the jaw there so that it opens and closes when the servo is turning and we can control that with a servo controller uh, which we'll look at in a moment. So I've made up my roller assembly with my four rollers and the aim was that this piece uh, would slide in here quite nicely. I've also cut out the slot of course at the back so the servo can slide in and the whole thing can dock. So that's what that cutout was for. Um, I was hoping it was going to be too tight so I could um, sand down this piece slightly but actually it's slightly, um, slightly loose for some reason. So basically I'm just going to stick some tape down the edges of this sliding piece so that it fits better into the, into the slide although on the whole it's not too bad. Um, and then we need to fit the little spacer which goes over the top, and the big wheel. So that piece can turn and push this in and out. So I've had to print a new piece which I've got here, and that's because uh, this piece which I was intending to mount the wheel on, so that was going to sit on top of there, and that was going to mount on here, so the wheel was mounted above, but actually it's far too much in, in front of that servo when the thing comes back to dock, which I hadn't considered. So I've made this piece instead, which is going to sit just like that, which the servo can go underneath, and then this wheel is going to go here. So um, as that turns, that will then, as intended, push this in and out, and I've got the pivot point there and the pivot point here to have a uh, rod that pushes that just like the piston of a steam engine. So I need to get that mounted, um, then work out exactly how much distance I need for that piece, um, and then put this rod in, and then we should be able to give it a test. So I've acetone welded that part in place and mounted the wheel on it, so it turns this way. And you can see, hopefully, that that's clear of the sliding piece. So I've got some new parts to add. I've got this push rod which goes in there, so this piece is going to be attached between the pin on here, which is a screw, and it's going to be attached underneath this part so that it fits there and between the pivot hole on here. So as this wheel turns, this pushes in and out. And I've also got this part, which goes on the servo horn and the little bracket, which is going to be acetone welded onto the bottom of the jaw. So let me get those stuck on and then we should be able to move all the parts. 
So here are all the parts together. Obviously if I turn this wheel, it shoves the inner jaw out and you can see the rod that I've put in there, which is a bit like the piston on a steam train, as I mentioned. It comes behind this wheel. So if I turn this round, you can probably just see it behind here. So as the wheel turns, that'll go round. I'm not sure what's gonna turn this wheel yet. Uh, bearing in mind, Alien's head's quite long, so I'd like to have another mechanism and all of these things you'll see inside the head. So I'll probably put some more decorative stuff on here that's a bit more alien inspired, but essentially all of the head is going to be made of a frame, so you'll be able to see the mechanics inside. I've also added the rod for the inner jaw, so as this servo turns, it opens the jaw, which works quite well. Obviously the rod is a bit unsightly, but since this is a scrap metal sculpture inspired alien, I'm not too bothered. Um, perhaps if I was a bit cleverer, I could have brought that up so it follows the line of the neck and I still may replace that piece in the future but for now the mechanics works so that the jaw opens and closes. So we need to design a hinge to hold the upper and lower jaw and hold the inner jaw mechanism so that's what I've got here the yellow parts are the existing parts I've printed that's the top jaw and the back part there is the assembly for the inner jaw. The blue part is the part I'm going to print, which is going to be part of the internal frame of the head that holds all this stuff. There'll be some more to hold the bottom of the inner jaw mechanism rather than it just being attached with the top there on that blue fin. So if you're wondering what the grey spikes are sticking out there, that's actually the shadows because this whole thing is upside down and obviously it'll be printed that way on the printer. And I've got some lugs there, the kind of big hinge parts in the middle are to hinge the lower jaw. And the little holes I've put in there, in those girder parts that you can see, those are basically to stop the part warping, so they remove stress through the part as it's printed, because the ABS shrinks as it cools, which um, means that sometimes the layers bend apart or the part sh um, bends upwards. So the holes there are to break the stress, which is why they're in that part all the way along. That part is... Um, nearly 150 mil long. So let's um, get that printed out and put it all together. So I've printed that part. I haven't bothered showing you the printing process because you've probably seen it a number of times before. But here's the part anyway. So this um, has these forks which I will acetone weld onto the teeth. And because I put both parts in CAD that aligns perfectly and the angle is perfect on each one. The um, uh, knobs there align with the hinges that I left in the jaw and the fin on this aligns with this piece so that I can uh, position this. This will be acetone welded on in just the right angle so that the inner jaw goes through the um, jaw, the outer jaw as it opens, just missing the top teeth. So this should all fit together quite nicely. That piece goes on there and that should make up the whole assembly. Then we can then build the rest of the head on the top. So I've got these little lugs which are M8 studding which I'm going to screw in here and that'll make the hinge to the outer jaw. So let's get that together and see how it hangs together. Alright so there it is. So my bottom jaw hinge is there quite nicely and then I can wind this to pop out the inner jaw and that can open and shut. And then that can pop back in again. There it goes, let's just do that. And then the jaw shuts and everything's good. So I've put some more pictures on my website as well as the rest of the project and the arm and all the other pieces. So that's all I've got for this project for this video, but don't forget to check out my channel for more updates on this project and also my Hulkbuster build. There's also some video of me doing a panel and the day at EGX, which is Eurogamer London at Earl's Court, which was a couple of weeks ago. Don't forget to check out my social media pages and also my Facebook discussion group.